Hello GIS friends, my name is Jesse Van Horn and I'm going to be walking you through these training videos for the Agricultural Conservation Planning Framework, better known as the ACPF. The ACPF was developed at the National Lab for Ag and Environment in Ames, Iowa by a group of geographers and soil scientists that work for the Agricultural Research Service with the USDA. While you're running the ACPF tools, if you ever encounter any problem that can't be solved uh, by some Google search or visiting the ACPF forum, feel free to email our help desk at helloacpf at ars.usda.gov. Also, if you just have any cool ideas or questions about the overall concept, feel free to shoot us an email. I also wanna mention real quick the ACPF forum a lot of people post their questions to here so the acpf community can see it and this is really helpful because a lot of people encounter the same errors or have the same questions so a lot of times your question has already been asked and answered there so you can just go to this link shown here and to participate you're going to first need to send an email to acpf dash group plus sign subscribe at umn edu Alrighty, so let's start our first video. Within this first video, we're going to go over some necessary setup you need to do before using the ACPF. This involves downloading the ACPF toolbox in the user manual, also downloading the TauDM software that we use in a few of our tools, loading the ACPF toolbox in Art Catalog, setting up our ACPF folder directories, and then making some adjustments to our workspace and geoprocessing settings within our catalog and our map. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's get started. First off, we need to get our ACPF toolbox and the user manual bundle. And we may also wanna grab some data as well. So we'll start off by getting the toolbox at the North Central Region Water Network website. That's northcentralwater.org. We'll go to their resources tabs and then click on the ACPF watershed tool. Once on that web page, we can see right at the top it says you can download the new ACPF toolbox version 2.1 and user manual here. So you would click here. It's going to take you to a page where you can download it all. And that should probably go to your downloads. It's going to be downloaded in a zipped folder, so you just have to unzip it to a local drive. And we'll go over where you should save it to in a little bit. I also want to point out that on this web page is also the link to go get some ACPF geo databases. Under this section of land use and soils data, if you click here, you'll be taken to our ACPF land use viewer. All of the watersheds shown here in color, and then when you zoom in, the ones that have names and IDs denoting them are the ones that are available for download. You can see here under the legend that tells you that. You can search for Huck 12s either by their Huck 12 ID or their name. So for example, if I typed in deer and hit search, all the watersheds with the word deer in their name are gonna pop up telling me their Huck ID number and the state that they're located in. So I can then go to my view and downloading instructions. Right now we're just navigating so you can see I can easily pan across the screen. If I hit view PDF and then click on a watershed, a new screen will pop up giving me some basic land use information on that watershed as well as a PDF that could be printed out. If I go back to the viewer and hit download geo database, now when I select on the watershed, you can see it's been highlighted and then it's now ready to be downloaded. So if I hit download, I'm going to have a zipped folder with my ACPF geo database located inside of it that I'll have to unzip and save to the proper location. All right, so let's move on to the TauDEM software. In order to run the ACPF, TauDEM software must be installed on your computer. TauDM is a software developed by T David Tarbotten at Utah State University, and it can be accessed through the following website here at hydrology.usu.edu 
forward slash TauDEM, and so on. It'll take you to the home page, and then you'll need to click on the Downloads tab to get there. And this will take you to this page. First off, you may need to enter some organization information before you can access these downloads, but don't worry, that's simply just for their records and to email you about updates if that happens. But once you're here, you're going to want to make sure that you download the TauDEM most recent version complete Windows installer. The ACPF uses the software for a number of reasons, including its ability to process on multiple computer cores at once, as well as some enhanced terrain processing abilities that it offers. Let's look at where I saved my ACPF download to and some of the file structure. So I've opened up a Windows Explorer window. I'm going to go to my C drive, and then I've created this overarching folder called ACPF. I open that up, and there's my download. When you save your ACPF folder, you're going to want to save it to a permanent local location, in my case, the C drive. Do not save this to your desktop, and do not save it to a network drive. Also, wherever you do save it, Make sure that there are no spaces in the path name. If you feel the need to use a space, use an underscore as we've done here. All right, now let's take a closer look at the contents. So within the download, you get quite a few items. First off, in your docs folder is the ACPF user manual. You must read through the user manual to fully understand the concept behind the ACPF and how the tools run. There's critical material within here, not only about the tools and uh, the setup of the ACPF, but the theory behind the ACPF and why it cites practices where it does in the landscape. Personally, I recommend having this open while you're going through the tools the first or second time and just reading through it before you actually run each tool. And it'll help you understand how the tools work, but also why you are making certain decisions when you are running the tools. Next, we have a metadata folder. And within here are all the metadata files for each base layer that you get when you download an ACPF file geodatabase. So for example, if we open up the field boundary uh, base layer metadata, you can see we get some basic information and a summary on this layer. What does it contain? Uh, what files were used to generate this? It goes into a bit more detail on how this file was created and what information it has inside. There's also information on the author, on the spatial extent, the last date of modification or creation, and the spatial reference, and much more information. So if you ever have any questions about what these files contain or maybe how they were generated, come to the metadata folder and you can read up on it. The next folder is the scripts folder, and within here are all the Python scripts that go with the ACPF tools. If you are familiar with Python or would just like to take a look, you can right click on any of these and hit edit with idle, and the Python script will open up. You can see we also have a utilities folder in here that contains Python scripts for the utilities tool set within the toolbox. Next is a text file that just has some ACPF toolbox installation instructions. I've gone over this, however, if you need a refresher, feel free to go right here. Then we have the ACPF land use lookup table, and this was used to format the NAS land use data that we use with the ACPF. You then have a Word doc that goes over some of the changes made moving from version 1 to version 2. And then last but certainly not least, we have the ACPF toolbox. And this is the toolbox that we will be uploading to our catalog and arc map to actually run the tools. We also want to make sure that we store our ACPF data on a local drive. Once again, not the desktop, not a network drive. So I've created an additional folder called ACPF underscore data. If we go into that, we can see the file geo geodatabase that I chose to download. And this is the watershed that I'm going to use for a majority of these videos. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download this watershed here, and we'll be doing a lot of the same processes. All right, so let's create our file directory for the ACPF data and make some edits in our art catalog settings. 
So first of all, we'll head up to this Geo Processing tab, and let's go to our environments. Now we're going to go to the Workspace tab, and we want to make sure that we like where our current workspace and our Scratch workspace are set. So mine is set to C Drive, Users, My User Profile, Documents, ArcGIS, and Default Geodatabase. There's a good chance that yours is set to this similar location as well, obviously your personal user profile name. ArcGIS tends to make this the default. However, if it's not, you would just simply click on this folder and navigate to this location. These workspaces can be set to folders or a different geodatabase if you wish. Uh, you just always want to make sure that it's set to a local drive, in my case, my C drive. You do not want this to be working off of a network drive. So I'm happy with the settings. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to go back to this geoprocessing tab, and this time go into geoprocessing options. Under general, we want to make sure that overwrite the outputs of geoprocessing operations is checked. This means if we ever want to rerun a tool but keep the same name, it's just going to overwrite that previous output with no problem at all. We're also going to want to make sure that background processing is enabled. So check both of these settings. Enabling background processing just allows the tool to run in the background so you can uh, continue to work in your map document while the tool is running. And it can also speed up the actual processing time. Everything else looks good to me, so I'm going to hit OK. And now we can add our ACPF toolbox. So to add our ACPF toolbox, we first need to open the ARC GIS toolbox window. And we can access that right here. You can see mine's automatically been docked. Yours may have popped out like a separate window. If you grab it and highlight this little arrow, boom, now it's attached. So the way we add our toolbox is by right clicking in this white space and hit add toolbox. We'll navigate to where we saved our toolbox. So in my case, I was on the C drive under ACPF under this parent directory folder. And then we grab our toolbox and hit open. If you want to make this convenient and have this toolbox always pop up every time you open Arc Catalog or Arc Map, all you have to do is right click, go to Save Settings, and to Default. Now, even when you close Arc Catalog or Arc Map and then reopen them, this toolbox is always going to be here. There's another important window within Arc Catalog and Arc Map that I'd like to point out, and that's your results window. So you can see I'm running a tool right now from the ACPF, and if we go to Geo Processing down to Results, we get this window. Similarly to the toolbox, yours may be a floating window. I toggle mine to the side. Now you can see we're in a current session. If I expand this, I can see my tool that just succeeded in running here. And I can expand this again and go to Messages. And this shows me everything that the tool is doing while it's running. Within the Python scripts that were written, there are messages that are put out once a certain point of that tool has been reached. And this can be very helpful if an error is thrown or maybe a tool is taking a while to run. You can come to these messages and see what happened or where it is currently to make sure that everything is running properly. You can also check out your inputs, make sure that they actually were the correct inputs that's going on, and see some basic environment uh, settings here. This is just a very valuable window to have and you know, to uh, look at occasionally, especially when a tool is running or if an error is thrown, like I was saying. Not all ArcGIS tools are going to have such in-depth messages, but all of the ACPF tools do. Lastly, I'm just going to show you real quick how to make a folder connection. You can either do it by clicking on this icon, which opens up this window. Or you can right click on folder connections and do connect folder. You'll navigate to where you're keeping your data currently. So I have mine on my C drive, ACPF data, and I can hit OK here. I want to point out that a file geodatabase cannot be a direct folder connection. You can see I can't hit OK. 
So that's why you need to have this overarching uh, parent folder that it sits in. So you can hit OK. And now we can see that directly the C ACPF underscore data is a folder connection. If I open this up, here's my file geodatabase with all this data that I've already processed in the past. So we'll take a closer look at what you get when you download a fresh geodatabase in the next video. Here's a brief recap on your Windows Explorer and Art Catalog settings. Next up, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that file geodatabase that we downloaded to take a look at the base data.